Hey everyone, welcome to Brick Vault. Today we are pulling from our display cases one of the most beloved movie franchise collections that we have in Lego minifigure form. In front of us are all of the Toy Story minifigures ever made, and I've also included a few extra characters that are brick built and otherwise that I think just totally complete the collection. There are two main releases when it comes to uh, the creation of these minifigs. The original version of these characters came out in 2010 with Toy Story 3, and they also released characters from some of the earlier movies, similar to how they did Indiana Jones. And then 2019 with Toy Story 4 came out with a whole new line of sets, mostly from the Junior's Wave, and they actually approached the characters fundamentally in a different way. So it will be kind of fun to do some comparisons at the end of the video, but like all I'm going to be doing this collection chronologically from when they were released, what sets they came out in, how much they are currently worth, and before I jump into this, I do want to say that if you like the display that you are looking at right now, the collectible minifigure display case can be bought at our web store, www.brickvault.toys. It's made from all American red oak, comes in a variety of different colors, and it is produced made in America. So anyways, uh, if that's something that you're interested in displaying your figs with, you can check us out in the link below. And now let's jump into the very first figs from the wave. And it looks like we're starting off with our two favorite characters, or I would say a lot of people's two favorite characters. We've got Woody and Buzz Lightyear. Uh, Woody came out in the Woody and Buzz to the Rescue set. This is how he's being depicted here, Buzz as well, because he's got the rocket on his back. In the collection, there's actually two different version th versions of this guy that I've included, which is a rocket version and a non-rocket version, even though officially it doesn't really, uh, they're not really different figs. But anyways, this guy sells for around eight bucks. Buzz is around five. That's partially because they're very, very common. Um, and yeah, there's some unique features here. Look, Woody's got very tall legs. Only him and Jesse ever got the tall minifigure legs, which is uh, very, very interesting. They didn't do dual molding back then, but the uh, printing on the sides and the bottoms of the legs is actually extremely high quality, especially for the time when this figure came out. There's some really nice detailing, especially by the collar. Pay attention to that when I do a uh, comparison with Woody and the new version at the end. Also, there is a small ring on his back as well, which I think is a pretty accurate detail. Let me take the pieces off Buzz. Now you can see what he looks like without his armor pieces on. I do like that they included just a little bit of printing on him here and there, even though that's supposed to be covered up. And then this is Buzz one more time with his armor back on and no rocket. Personally, I think they did a great job with the two main characters here. I do like the specially molded heads and let's move on to the next two guys. This alien came from a bunch of different sets. I think he first appeared in the Construct a Zerg set. And then this Zerg minifigure came out in the Buzz's Star Command spaceship. Four bucks for this alien guy. What makes him particularly different is that he's got a blue belt and a little bit of purple there at the top that's slightly different from the rest. And then Zerg is extremely unique with the, uh, the tall purple slope piece and of course exclusive print for the body, specially molded armor, a specially made cape, and a specially molded head. He only came out in one set, so guess what? He is 35 bucks if you wanted to get him brand new. It's really hard to get this long cape in good condition, and that actually makes him the most expensive and difficult figure to get in this whole collection. Personally, I think he looks great. They did such a good job for the mold for his head especially, so really cool looking guy. One of these days, I do want to actually get a uh, re-get that can construct a Zerg set. It's really cool. And let's move on to the next two figures. I like going two by two. Jesse appeared in the Woody's Roundup set as well as the Western Train Chase. And uh, Stinky Pete only came out in the Woody's Roundup set. Here you can see Jesse has uh, the really long legs and uh, the printing goes really, really high up there, which is kind of interesting. And I like that they even decided to have printing on the sides of the feet just for that, but not for the chaps in the front. It's a really, really fun detail. And because she's just so darn unique uh, with the long arms, I also didn't say that for Woody, but she's got long arms just like Woody. They're not the standard uh, minifigure length arms as you can see when they're side by side. She is 14 bucks, while Stinky Pete 
only appearing in one set and still being a pretty prominent character, sells for around 20 if you wanted to get them brand new. On the grand scheme of things, uh, Toy Story figs in general, I think are a bit more collectible uh, when it comes to different movie characters, uh, especially comparing different Lego collections. So that's kind of interesting. And then you could just see Bullseye uh, around the corner of this shot there, but Bullseye came in the same two sets from before Woody's Roundup Western Train Chase. Doesn't count as a minifigure. Technically it's an animal fig, but certainly needs to be in the Toy Story collection. Such a great mold from every angle. This is, everything is specifically molded to look just like Bullseye. You could only get them in these two sets. Another $14 piece, a collectible piece, if you wanted to get them brand new, and he can actually uh, lean forward and back, if I can show you that a little bit. He has some posability for his legs, which is kind of fun. Now, as a technicality, there's only two different official versions of the Green Army Man, and in reality, there's only basically one. There's the basic Green Army Man, the first three guys that you've got here, and then there's the medic. And he's only a medic because he's got that little cross on that single helmet, even though the prints for these guys and the expressions for their faces are all the same. Uh, I decided to include all four just because they have specially molded pieces in green that only belonged to each of them individually. So kind of they're all unique based on their accessories, though I know according to Bricklink and other collectors, that doesn't necessarily make them unique, but I just thought that they all kind of needed to be together for this collection to feel complete for me. You noticed before, but there's no printing on the back. There's no alternate expressions up close. This is what the two different guys look like a little bit better. I think they're pretty excellent, honestly. And each of them goes for around three bucks. Now up next is Woody from the Trash Compactor Escape Set. He's different because he's got uh, some dirty detailing all over his body. Also the expression on his face has changed. And uh, what I think is most notable about this guy is actually the fact that there's printing on the inside of the arm here, dirt printing on the inside of the arms on either side. Even when there is arm printing, it's usually somewhere around the cuff or uh, just, on, just on the outer edge. This is one of the very few, or it's the only example I can think of honestly, where there is printing on the inside of a Lego minifigure arm. It's just not uh, done. And perhaps the only reason why they had space to do it here is because it's a slightly larger than normal minifigure arm, because this is the tall Woody. He is a $10 fig. And then these two guys also came from that same trash compactor escape set. Uh, both of these aliens are around $6. They just have different splotches on their faces and actually their body print is exactly the same. Uh, and the baseline print for this body is the same as the one you saw before, only there's just dirt printing on the front and back. So their heads are different. That's what makes these guys different. They both came out in that same set. And also from the same set are these next two guys. So they're dirty versions of Lotso and dirty versions of Ham. This is the first time you're seeing Ham here in a set. Uh, and he looks pretty good. He's got the yellow splotches on the side. Uh, what makes him complete actually is him having a little plug piece at the bottom, which is unique just to Ham. It's kind of rubbery and expensive if you want to buy it on your own. Ham is around $13 here, the dirty version. Dirty Lotso is around three bucks. One of the cheaper, larger figs actually out of any collection, which is kind of interesting. And I know I mentioned the Western Train Chase set before, but these two guys are actually exclusive just to this set. We've got Original Ham and Original Rex. Actually, Rex came out in one other set. But what's so interesting about this guy, Ham in his complete form is very, very difficult to get because he's got this special little bowler hat. And of course, there's that plug piece, which people lose so often. Buying the three pieces that make up Ham individually would be 50 bucks on Bricklink. But if you're lucky, you can find the complete version of Ham on his own for around 20 bucks. So he's still very, very expensive. Rex has some excellent molding all around. If I can get him to spin, I can't really, while Ham is there. But uh, he's got posable little arms, posable little legs, uh, awesome print for the face. Everything moves around. He he is uh, posable. Uh, just take my word for it. He's a little bit. He is a little bit stiff. <laughs> But yeah, he can actually fit on there. Fun looking guy, maybe roughly 10 bucks if you wanted to get him, maybe slightly cheaper, brand new. And then technically a version of Ham came out from the Pizza Planet truck rescue set where he didn't have a bowler cap, which 
makes them a different version of ham. That is a $15 mold, technically not a minifigure. And let's move on to the garbage truck rescue set where these three guys came out. Twitch is here on the uh, left side, by far the most collectible from this uh, from this set. And he's actually the second most collectible figure in the wave coming out to 30 bucks if you wanted to get him brand new. He's got antenna pieces that are detachable and very easy to lose. This wing piece is also unique. The head mold, obviously the print. So he's just uh, different all around. Very interesting looking bug fig. Dirty Jesse has a different expression and just like Woody, different dirt uh, prints that kind of go all around. Molding, sorry, printing on the inside of the arms as well. Different print for the the dirty arms too i like that it's not actually just a mirror image of what you saw on woody's arms 13 bucks for jesse and the same thing goes for buzz lightyear dirty version of him interestingly enough uh he's pretty expensive he's a 20 dollar fig uh to get this guy i mean it's the only time you can get dirty buzz but i just wonder why he's I don't know, I guess he's a little bit more sought after just because of that rarity. Um, and people aren't bothered that he's that he's dirty like this so much. His expression is also different, which is nice. And then finishing off the 2010 Toy Story figs, we've got these four figs. Some of them not really figs, but they all came from the same set. Lotso's dump truck. Chunk here is around a buck. Really, really easy to get this guy, very cheap. Super unique with the interchangeable face and the weirdly molded arms that come around. Stretch is very, very unique. You can see how stretchy these eight octopus arms are. They're, it's a super large uh, kind of splat looking piece. I like the little print for the disgruntled face. The normal Lotso is just two bucks. Stretch is actually the most expensive here, being four for that weird purple stretchy piece. Lotso is extremely easy to get. I just find that so interesting considering he's such a big, uh, he's basically a big fig, but just a really, really cheap version of that. And then this is the driver thing that's inside the little, the little truck in the set. Uh, you can tell me what this facial expression is best used for. It's unique just to this minifigure head for the driver piece, but I don't think I want to say it in this video what I think it looks best for. Now the last thing I want to mention in 2010 was also the inclusion of RC. He's not a minifigure, but a brick built figure, a character. I mean that these toys are alive, that is the whole point, but he's actually got a wind up motor in him, which is pretty cool. He can actually ride around, which is awesome. He appeared in the very first set, Woody and Buzz to the rescue. So I just think that was kind of fun to include. He's got really awesome printing on the sides for the splash effects, uh, you know, pan pieces that are molded in lime green, just some unique color pieces. Uh, the piece, the actual wind up motor is a pretty uh, unique piece to get him in. So uh, yeah, just anyways, that's a guy that's included in the collection, though he doesn't count as a fig. So there it is for 2010. That's the larger chunk of the collection for sure. And before we jump into 2019, these two guys in the middle came out in the Disney collectible minifigure series from 2016. These two figs I felt like were a little bit disappointing all in all from the collectible minifigure series just because uh, Lego had the existing mold for the alien head and also the existing mold for Buzz Lightyear's wings and his armor piece. So it just kind of felt like nah, they just they went for the easy route and just remade stuff uh, that they already had. Now this is the first time we do see Buzz Lightyear with a minifigure head and the print for his face is I think better than the ones we see from 2019. I'll do a comparison at the end. And this guy's got printing on his feet and slightly different, more colorful highlights for his torso. So I guess he's slightly better than the original version of the alien, though I don't think most people care. Three bucks, 10 bucks, interestingly enough. Pretty expensive actually for a collectible minifig series figure in general. All right, you'll see some uh, different comparisons almost immediately with Buzz Lightyear. Here are all of the characters from 2019, the Toy Story 4 wave. Now we're starting off again with Woody, and this time he is more minifigure-ified. His details have changed. I think he's simplified a little bit, the details on the outside here. Uh, they're a little bit flatter, for sure. I'll get into that later, but his distinctive features are, of course, the dual-molded legs, which does look pretty darn good with the nougat contrasting with the blue. He's just holding the RC remote control. He did come out in the Woody and RC set, plus Duke Kaboom's stunt show. He's three bucks and he also has an alternate expression. There's one other version of him with 
different expressions you'll see later down the line and from this first set the woody and rc uh set there are a bunch of the little green army men in micro fig scale the set comes with four in total including the spare and i don't know they're not they're not very expensive like 10 cents a piece or something like that now this is duke from the duke kabooms stunt show set He's got really wonderful printing on the sides of his legs, which I particularly like. The printing on the front of him is also just less flat than some of the main characters, which I think is good. And he does have printing on the back too with a nice racing stripe. He's got an alternate expression, which is pretty darn awesome. He comes with a helmet and hairpiece, as you can see. He is around five bucks plus another 250 roughly if you wanted to also include him with his bike with that cool print for the maple leaf there on the front now moving down the line there are three figs from buzz and bo peeps playground adventure let's actually just start off close up one by one we've got the version of buzz lightyear that came out in these latest sets you can see he's actually very 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 similar to the one that we saw from the collectible minifigure series with that minifigure head though the expression is different and the printing is not quite as good i'll show you guys at the end he sells for around four dollars same with bo peep here her printing though i would say is considerably better and probably some of the best printing from any of the characters from this wave at all she's got some printing on the back which is simple but nice that it's included she's got that soft cloth cape and also she has an alternate expression which is very simple but nice that she's got that also the hairpiece mold for her is exclusive just to Bo Peep and it looks pretty darn good Gabby Gabby here is five dollars awesome polka dots that go all around that dress piece or it's a skirt piece but it matches up uh, and becomes a dress piece because uh, it matches up with the printing for the dress overall really 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 wonderful prints though also i like the printing on the legs and the toes she just feels very complete she may have looked a little bit better with dual molding, but no, probably not. It kind of makes sense that they chose to keep her legs completely white there and just have the printing on one side. The freckles look good for her expressions. This is her alternate. Great looking fig. These next four figs are all gonna be from the same set, the Toy Story 4 RV Vacation. Interesting that they put Toy Story 4 in the official title of this set. This is just another alien. His collar print is slightly different from the original. I'll show you guys in the comparison at the end. He's around two or three bucks. This is the Forky mold. Really funny, actually, I like that he has such an original, unique, weird-looking mold for him, but it makes a lot of sense. The print for his face is actually especially good. I like how they did the mouth. He is a $4 little piece right here. And now we are looking at Jesse. Jesse is back in minifigure form. Let me just take off the hat hairpiece so you can see her alternate expression. Great alternate. Uh, I like also that her hairpiece, uh, you can add that little tie in the back, which is fun. Um, yes, and the printing on her body is much flatter especially that torso piece i will show you guys at the end but i do think it is less quality it just there's almost no depth to the actual shading of this character which uh which is i think a common thread for the four and up figs that we see at the end now we've got another version of rex he is pretty much exactly the same pretty much exactly the same but you can see that he's got uh, some eyebrows drawn on there so that's kind of funny they they ch they changed the print on this but the mold is actually exactly the same so technically he's a different guy because the print isn't the same and if you really want to be splitting hairs there is some slight difference for the belly print it's just cleaned up a little bit more up here the the belly print is almost exact for the previous one but it, you can tell the difference you tell me if it really needs to be that different they actually changed the color tone of it uh, whatever that's different so technically rex is different he's six dollars and then we've got the final three from this wave buzz and woody's carnival mania set gave us these three guys we've got bunny and ducky and another version of woody he just has different facial expression so a much bigger grin here and a scared face but that's uh, the difference. I do like the molds on these uh, unique characters. Let's see if I can, there we go, get his hair piece back on. Bunny has a kind of Five Nights at Freddy's vibe for me personally, just, uh, just with some of the stitching, I know that's not the case. But uh, th this is a very, very unique fig. I think probably one of my favorites 
from this later wave. Ducky is certainly a cute little mold for sure. Each of these guys is around four bucks. Maybe Woody is something like three bucks. And now we are officially doing some comparison. So we have the original Woody in the middle. You can see that the ring on his back is much, much smaller. And I mean, that actually is a lot more proportionally accurate to the character. When it comes to the front, you can see the word sheriff is actually printed on there. But I think the main thing that really pops to me is if you look at the collar, it kind of looks three-dimensional there. The collar at the top of Woody's head here, where you have these just kind of flat square collar pieces for uh, the, the top of the shirt for the other Woody pieces. It really just doesn't pop quite the same way with these newer guys. Personally, I don't think the minifigure face and hair and hat mold, I think that looks great. I think it looks fine. If somebody prefers the minifigure version of Woody, uh, I totally I totally understand why they would want to do that. Uh, just being integratable and interchangeable with the official Lego style makes a lot of sense. But on the surface, I do think uh, they just spent a little bit more time, effort, energy, and uh, just added some extra details to the original version of Woody that they didn't quite do with the junior versions. Now we're looking at original Buzz Lightyear here. This is the CMF series Buzz Lightyear and the latest one from the latest line of sets. Now when it comes to facial printing, you can see that this is a little bit more opaque. And when you look really close at actually, you can almost see the purple kind of coming through. Uh, that tan printing for the face. This is a lot more tan, a lot more vibrant and much better, but you can also see side printing on the legs. The CMF series by far has the best body printing. He's got side printing for the legs and for the arms. And the mold for any of these guys' bodies and wings are all the same. Same thing with the, the top canopy. And that kind of makes up a huge portion of the character. A lot of the body printing, I think most people don't really pay a huge amount of attention to. Uh, and you can only really start seeing the differences when you look at the sides of this particular buzz. Also, it's kind of interesting to see how they played around with the detailing on the underside. The original uh, buzz has the Star Command insignia that is hidden all the time. They kept the exact same torso print for the latest version even though they did update and change up the leg printing at least on the front so it is kind of interesting they didn't bother to have any sort of printing for the CMF series version I don't think anybody cares uh, the printed arms on the side certainly look a lot better and this is going to always be covered up by armor but it is just kind of interesting to note that they copied the same torso piece from 10 years later and then they did bother to update the legs just a little bit more because he looks a little different there and then when it comes to the Pizza Planet aliens, there's, I mean, the differences are so subtle here. This is the original, this is the CMF series, this is what came out from 2019. Uh, generally speaking, I would say the actual Pizza Planet logo pops the best, I would say, personally, for me. I was looking at the pictures, I think this looks the best, the actual Pizza Planet looks best on the first guy, though this purple printing is a little bit too light for me. They gave him a purple belt for the collectible series, which isn't accurate. It, Looks a little bit more fun and poppy, but it's just a creative liberty. It should be dark blue like the other two guys, though this guy does have the good printing for the feet. And then this guy has the best purple popping print that looks the best there, though the Pizza Planet logo I think is the best on this guy. So if you switched this logo with that, gave the legs from this guy to this guy, you'd probably have the best combination of the alien, but at the end of the day, whale milk has the consistency of toothpaste. Now we already saw the Rex comparisons basically, so the last thing to show off are the two different Jessies, and it's kind of interesting. I feel like because Jesse's such a tall figure, it sort of makes sense that they didn't include negative space for the hips just the 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 raggedy ann or sorry the the ragdoll kind of uh, shape for this doll character just didn't really have that so I think it sort of makes sense that she was done this way. And the inclusion of the negative space here and then having no shading at all around on the torso pieces just makes this character look and feel a little bit flatter and less consistent. Now I do have to say that the back printing is of course better for the new Jesse. Uh, there's, there's actual back printing, so that's something that I think is a positive for the new version of this character. And uh, yeah, that's about all I have to say for comparisons, except for RC and RC. Uh, this little K 
kitty look for this character is, it's funny. I'd like the big poppy eyes, he's super cutesy. The print for the splash is actually still very, very nice here on the front. It's a really nice print all around. Junior's sets in general have actually very, very good print detailing on the larger pieces, though of course, uh, the original version of this guy takes the cake by about a million and a half points. Now, all right, here we are towards the end of the video. I have some final thoughts about the two different versions of this collection, I suppose, the 2010 guys and the 2019 guys. At the end of the day, what we're looking at in terms of uh, production differences really just reflects on the LEGO marketing team understanding their overall audience. When it comes to uh, the 2010 sets, they were releasing nostalgic sets from movies that had come out years and years earlier, so they knew their audience was gonna be a little bit older and they had a feeling that adults that were still nostalgic for some of these characters would be interested in buying them. And therefore, they made the figures just look a little bit more detailed in certain ways. And they had the more expensive to produce molded heads that are not actually minifigure heads. Because, of course, they can only come out in these sets. You can't reuse them for making different characters down the line. When it comes to the 2019 sets, all the sets that came out were Toy Story 4 ones, which means only younger kids were really being targeted, and the younger kids don't care as much, I don't think, about having their super accurate head shapes for, for the, the figs that they're interested in. Uh, Lego also, I think, realized that their details didn't need to be quite on par. They're a little bit more cartoony, they pop a little bit more easy to see certain details like the drawstring on the back of Woody, for example. So it kind of makes sense that they were produced in this particular manner. It's not better, it's not worse, it's just LEGO realizing where they need to uh, focus their resources on based on the different audience that they're targeting. So it's kind of interesting to see how different uh, certain characters can look depending on who they're actually trying to sell to, even though that some of these characters are the exact same. So that's just kind of an interesting anecdotal historical piece of this collection, which is which is kind of fun, and it's the reason why I enjoy doing these videos. Um, all right, so that is going to be it. I'm putting them back in the collection now. Let me know what types of videos you'd like to see in the future, collection videos in particular, just because that's uh, the type that we get here. And um, yeah, thank you so much for watching, everyone. These are a lot of fun to do. If you enjoy our content, you can always like and subscribe. Check us out at our web store, www.brickvault.toys. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time at Brick Vault. Yeah.